Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Star Trek movies with Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. Now, this is one of the most interesting Star Trek movies. It's interesting because it's set almost entirely on Earth, and it's set almost entirely in our time. Well, it's set in the 1980s, which is when the movie was made, but, um, because the movie involves time travel, and Star Trek is generally set in the 23rd century, but in this movie, they travel back in time to the 1980s, so the movie's set almost entirely on Earth in the 1980s, which is interesting. Um, basically, the plot of Star Trek IV The Voyage Home is it picks up where Star Trek III The Search for Spock left off. Now, at the end of that movie, um, they took McCoy and Spock back to Vulcan, and that whole ritual was performed, which took Spock's mind out of McCoy and put it back in Spock's body. Um, you'll understand if you saw Search for Spock, but um, basically, um, in this one, uh, you find out that Kirk and the rest of the crew of the Enterprise are now pretty much being exiled to Vulcan because you realize that in the previous film, Kirk disobeyed a lot of um, rules that from Starfleet, like, um, he disobeyed a lot of orders from Starfleet because he was told not to take the Enterprise and take it to the Genesis planet, but he pretty much did that anyway, so now he's pretty much being exiled to Vulcan, um, and another thing that's interesting about this movie is the Enterprise is, isn't even in most of the movie because in the previous film, the Enterprise blew up, so so, in this movie, the crew of the Enterprise is actually using a Klingon bird of prey, because in the previous film, the Klingons were the main villains, and if after they defeated the Klingons at the end of the previous film, they ended up taking a Klingon bird of prey, and that's the ship they end up using in this movie, but basically what happens in the movie is they start heading back to Earth, and um, what happens is you find out that there's this alien probe which is heading towards Earth, and basically it's causing like these huge storms to happen on Earth, and it's pretty much like destroying the planet, and you find out that this thing is making these calls very similar to the calls of, hump of humpback whales, and now it turns out that the only way to save Earth is to somehow get humpback whales, but it turns out that humpback whales have been extinct for, like, 300 years, because Star Trek is set 300 years in the future, and you find out that in the Star Trek universe, humpback whales whales are extinct, so basically they have to travel back in time to the 1980s and try to get these two humpback whales and bring them back to their time to... Uh, you know, uh, try to get it to somehow communicate with this alien probe and get it to leave Earth, but, um, you know, that's the basic plot line of the movie, so they go back to Earth in the 20th century in the 1980s and try to get these two humpback whales, and the movie's actually set in San Francisco in the 1980s, and pretty much the whole movie from then on, when they get back to the 1980s, it pretty much becomes kind of like a fish-out-of-water comedy, and it's actually a pretty funny movie. Um, you know, like, uh, like, what happens is when they get to, um, San Francisco, like, there's a scene in the movie where they need money, and you find out that in the future that Star Trek takes place in, money doesn't exist anymore, so they now need money, so, like, there's a scene where Kirk is in a pawn shop, and he gives the guy his watch, and... And the guy's like, I'll give you a hundred dollars for it. And Kirk's like, is that a lot? And like, um, there's another scene where Kirk is crossing the street and he gets in front of a taxi cab and the guy's like, get out of the road, you dumbass. And Kirk's like, uh, well, double dumbass to you too. And, um, you know, it's a very fun movie, uh, you know, but... What happens is, eventually, they meet, um, this marine biologist played by Catherine Hicks, who I always remembered as the woman who played Andy Barkley's mother in the first Child's Play movie, but, um, yeah, uh, Star Trek 
for The Voyage Home is a very entertaining movie. Um, it's actually uh, directed, this one is once again directed by Leonard Nimoy, who plays Spock in the movie, and, um, and also it's co-written by Nicholas Meyer, who also directed the second Star Trek movie, Wrath of Khan. But, um, yeah, Star Trek IV The Voyage Home is a very entertaining movie. I don't like it as much as Wrath of Khan or Search for Spock, but it's still a pretty good one, and I would recommend it, and bye.